Hello everybody, welcome to an amazing match in the second round of Chalice. We've got Baza Castine and his Lizardmen versus Andy Devo and his Necromantic. We've got a stacked booth, people should try and talk less, especially if they're shit at Blood Bowl Fault Force. Um, uh, Fault Force, Calcium and Purple Chest, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> As I mentioned pre-game, Jim, I think this is going to be an absolute treat to very experienced coaches with races they're absolutely known to be masters of. Uh, what a festival of Blood Bowl we look forward to. They're, they're reasonably well matched. So no wizards, no extraordinary packs of inducements on either side. Um, let's see what it brings. Yeah, there's a there's a bribe for Andy is the only is the only inducement. Uh, 1670 versus 1770. 12 players for Devo, a rookie werewolf, but he, he so he's got a good werewolf, he's got six guard. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, Baza has some block guard Saurus, a couple of Edge Four Saurus, and a mighty blow tackler, and a couple of bench. So it's it's yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I would give the advantage to Baza if the team stays they are, but people will get removed, right? And and if it's Saurus, then it's going to get harder and harder for him as he loses them. But he can still work magic with the skink, so it's, it is going to be very interesting for sure. And we did see two armor breaks on that three line of scrimmage hits, uh, only to stuns. Yep. But I wonder if Andy's able to use that space this early in the game, or if he's just got to think, okay, a bit less pressure, a bit more chance to stabilise. Baza will be, yeah, Baza will be pretty happy. They're just stuns, won't he? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nothing nothing like, removed <laughs> of the three hits so far. That's that's yeah. pretty good. I think yeah, we're going to see result, three yeah. removals, right? Because he's he's going to foul uh, three armor breaks. He's going to foul this block guard Saurus with dirty player, like a hundred. Yeah, once he smashes that other Saurus, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think the wolf hits, as I said, the Saurus on the wing, and then absolutely that one he's put the uh, the golem on. No, it's a golem, I can't say it. <laughs> no! No, he's, he's, got he's got to do yeah. that. He's got to do that. Yeah, yeah okay, okay coming backwards so he doesn't end up on the skink. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the direction he wanted to push it, but had it been a push, he'd have pushed it back between them. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he just couldn't do that, could he? Foul no. first before the pick up, 100%. And actually, if it was a double set of pushes, there was a follow-up hit with the zombie, wasn't there? Mm. So actually a really nice play by Andy there. Really nice. And a, so yeah, three stuns. <clears throat> but yeah, Baz has got to be happy that not, you know they're not getting removed. And we could see the skink swarm here, couldn't we? Yeah, oh, this yeah, is really thrilled. awkward, isn't it? Really Particularly awkward. if he doesn't re-roll this pickup. Yep. I have mentioned to Andy before that one of his habitual challenge problems I've is leaving his ball hanging too far behind his aggressive pack. Mm. That's exactly what he's done here. The skinks have to come, don't they? Wow. The problem with the skinks coming here is there's a mighty blow tackle werewolf just loitering, waiting to counter it. So Only one, only one though. And there's three stun yeah. Saurus, so there's nothing in front, you know? Like, yeah, if, yeah. If, you, if these aren't stunned, you stand them all up, you put the other Saurus in and the Crocs in, and then, and then he's got so much to deal with in front of him. How does he deal with what's yes, behind Yes, you hold everything there while the skinks head backwards. Oh, I, I think he absolutely goes in here. I was just playing devil's advocate a little bit. <laughs> I think he has to come. I mean, the, the wolf will kill one, but then all the others. I mean, it's still one in four that that wolf doesn't pick up next time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's one it's in nice. four. That's brilliant. You can also put the Crocs around back on this ghoul, maybe, right? That's on the really ghoul. good, isn't yeah. it? Ghoul. Yeah, that's super good. It's really nice. That's, I mean, that's a hell of a position to have the Crocs. And it's in the way of the white. Um, it's so, uh, it, well, it would have been in the way of the white by default. He's screening off then, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps he thinks he can get all the way around behind. Yeah, yeah, bring back at him and screen it, yeah. Like, I like touching it, though. But then I guess again, right? That's the thing. If these aren't, if these three aren't stunned, then he does put it in for sure, right? Because the, but as it is, I guess he thinks people could just come back and hit it, and it's not worth giving the free two D block with block. And obviously, this one's getting protected the most because <laughs> I don't. I don't think basing there would have been too rowdy, would it? Basing the ghoul. No, I, no, I don't. He's going to storm would the ball as well. Yeah, I like um, it. He's, yeah. But I mean, I think he definitely because you bases could have been directly in front of the ghoul. I mean, a diagonal basing on the ghoul, a one in four dodge off fail, still good, but straight in front of it, limiting its ability to head backwards. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I he obviously, he, he obviously didn't like it because he's not, he's clearly not going to swarm now. Yeah. He's got, he's got, he's got a little bit, hasn't he? But yeah, I think, I think if these guys were standing up, then he a hundred percent does it. I think a hundred percent if he, if he didn't have any stuns. But yeah, I think with the stuns, he's just trying to 
limit hits, isn't he? Right, he's not leaving any. He's only giving away the. No, I bit. wonder if the agility, other agility, is going to come around the other side. No, nah, he just he doesn't want to give it up to the uh, wolf. Well, very, very cagey. I mean, the, the, plus, the first, the better yeah. plus agility is still there to take advantage of another misfield. Yeah. I still think Andy's got to pull some things back. He yeah. can't risk the crocs on those two skinks, even just those three coming for this ball. PC, is that a, is that a mistake on Davo's part? The fact that he didn't set up differently to sort of negate what is potentially going to happen, you know, in the rain. Uh, I mean, yes and no. I mean, yes, in the as I said, Andy. I mean, even once he's stabilised, Andy tends to leave his ball carrier a little bit out the back. Um, I've just noticed it before. I mean, a very tiny leak on a really, really good player. But um, the problem is, if you do send anything back, Necromantic aren't the type to really dominate a line of scrimmage. They need the two whites. They need the two golems. They even need one of the wolves to be up there doing some hitting. Yeah. And then the zombies just fill in. So what do you send back that you're not going to really, really miss? Yeah, and he's got a dirty player fighting. on a bribe. He's got a dirty yeah. player on a bribe, right? And and as he is behind. If if they if they stay full yep. teams for the whole yep. match, he's behind. So and, and actually, anything you, you pull know, away you stops you fighting six sauruses under Crocs. Which I was about to say he was um, he was debating the foul before doing anything else there, wasn't he? And with the bribe, I yep. don't hate it at all. No, he's got to risk it. I mean, he's he's in a position where he feels some high rolling is needed. Ooh. Yeah, this is a saucy blitz, but... Oh, wow. So now it's a 50% that he picks up. This is a real problem now. Yeah, yeah the other wolf has to here, come he's back. In, yeah, he's in trouble, isn't he? Well, that's a real good spot anyway, having the tackle there, isn't it? Well, yeah, one up was it's lovely. Good. But when I said it was a really good spot, I expected him to go one above where he was. But now, there's uh, a zombie that I think needs to fill in one believe the white, making it, um, you know, making uh, closing the gaping yeah. hole between the white and the wolf. Yeah. And then you do the pickup. He's not doing it. No. Yeah, that one needed to pull back to me. Yeah. So if this fifty percent. Or, or just failed, put the wolf there, right? Like put put the wolf on. He gets it. Yeah. Gets it. Well, I think that was really risky. Yeah. I think, I think that, that zombie to needed one. to pull back. I just think the Although to be one it's, it's doing good work where it is because it's stopping yeah. the two sauruses come through the yeah, gaping yeah, void he, in the middle. But yeah, he's good. He just he, the wolf just needed to be one up, right? That's that's yeah, all. Just the wolf yeah. Had to be that one would up. that would have done it too. I thought it was a great square and, and interesting that he didn't go there. It was great if you pulled the zombie back or one north if you weren't planning to. Either of those gives you a similar shape. I mean, it, it's better where it is if a zombie comes back because there's no way around the south of where he's picking up. Can we mean? just um, point out that that is a bare ass wolf he's picked up on? No block. Yeah, I don't really see. I mean, I suppose you could mark it with your good skink and hit with your disposable. It's interesting. Is, is, are the other skinks out of range to get the extra assist on? Well, the edge four. Might... Yeah, the edge four is more or less on the edge of getting in. Yes, on two go for it. It could give another assist. You could, you could get yourself two die at the moment. But he might, he might pull back right and stop that. Yeah, possibility. Well, I thought when he or moved he the zombie in, what to me was the wrong direction. He was planning to pull forwards if he picked yeah. up. Yeah, he could go here, couldn't he? But that's with the two stuns. He could go here. Yeah, that was the only oh, way yeah. that moving that zombie there made a lot of sense to me. Coming straight behind that wrestle zombie, for example. But now he's. Yeah, oh wow, that's rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, standing near the white, near the two golems, is is a decently safe place to be. And with the other wolf in your backfield, so if the ball does go down, you've got something nasty to come and hit the skinks with. Nah, well, he's given up. He's given up going for uh, going for that. He's given up going for the ball. Yeah, I think that's probably right. That's the disgusting thing, isn't it? They can threaten something. Like, there was so much threat yeah. there, wasn't there? And now they can just pull back instantly. Yep, yeah. and now they're all back ahead easy. of your ball. Yep. And that's even the big, strong ones. They're also incredibly fast. And all of those stunned ones are all now back in the game. Mm. Now, the guard-only Saurus was a late skill. So that's why he picked guard. He figured that was um, the thing that would add most to the team. Yeah. Particularly as it's likely to live on the line of scrimmage next to the crocs. You know, hopefully stand up after being hit. I think that's probably the right choice, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Like block is block is super good. It is super good. The thing is, the more the more guard you have, the better guard becomes as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's like it's 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 really like it's a really hard call, I think, because I guess because he's got a developed team, he's already got loads of block. Like generally, you just go all block, don't you? And so it's like NAF style; it's all block, right? People don't even take a guard normally; it's just all block. Yeah. But he has yep. got all this guard already, so that does make the guard better. Again, yeah. supporting the Crocs. Uh, but yep. then being defenseless against Clopom and and like you know this wolf and stuff, yep. it's pretty rubbish, isn't it? So it's it's interesting, uh, you know, if the, if the block that extra twenty percent. He's got to be a bit more careful with it and try and not put it in harm's way. But you've got to because it's your worst one. That's that's the problem, right? Whereas yeah. if it's a block one, you put it in the worst spot and he, he absorbs all the hits. So now I guess he's got a rookie as well that, that is the one he's trying to get, take all the hits on. Um, but at the moment, it's not getting hit. No idea, Zaz. <laughs> So it's turn three. I think Andy will want to foul the Crocs. <laughs> um, but then it, this is kind of the worst one to foul, isn't it? Like because it's he's the best one. He's the easiest one to knock over in terms of seventy-five percent instead of fifty-five. But on the other hand, um, he's the worst one to foul. And he's if you get all of those multiple over. assists, in, but yes, he's got to foul it and yeah. does. But he's he's the easiest one to knock over in terms of the dice. But he's the hardest one to get the yes. two dice on, isn't he? So yeah. it's, it's it's interesting. Super interesting. And there's also the tail, which whilst it isn't brilliant, it, you know, it is a little tiny factor. Yep. It can ruin your day, particularly if you're a wolf that wants to dodge off it. Yep. It can be put into some very nasty places. So Bazaar will be relieved that the Briver's now burnt? Yep, yes. that hasn't cost yep. him a, an injury, just a KO, which... Yep, not if he doesn't manage to stop it, he'll get two rolls on ready for his drive, so it's not the end of the world, is it? No, there's a, good, there's a great wolf hit here. Again, the, the guard steps up the hit, doesn't it? You can't really stop that as the... Uh, as the no, and Andy's got a lovely shape with the golems where he can do um, what you saw in my game, can't we? He can hit the first one and uh, chain the rookie off. And you can also leave the rookie there. It's surrounded by guard. It's, it's mm. bugger all he can do. And if you get pushes, you just push into the fleshy so you've still yeah. protected him. So yeah, does he leave say, it leave, out, or does he say no, no, he's you're leave him there. in trouble? Yeah, he's leaving yeah, there. Yeah, leave him there, yeah. Well, the problem with that is that when your guard stands up, you can put enough around the white that he gets a hit on the white to get him off the golems, yep. giving you a second hit on top of your blitz that turn. So I would have still have probably leave it out. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I would have, I would have absolutely done what Andy did there. So yeah, it's just interesting, isn't it? Different choices at yeah. the moment. The fact that he had a square of movement left means that I quite like getting out because you still, you know, you you'd power him to here, don't you? And then uh, you can move back to there, so you, you've still got your wolf protected, which is yeah. the most important part of this <laughs> this turn. And every turn is keeping your 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 block mighty uh, wolf. Yes, it's the best player on the necro team. It has to be protected. Yeah. But you see, now it's it's vulnerable, Jim, because I can put the assists in to hit that white and then get through and hit the wolf. Yes, which you might be doing. Which so that's what I'd be looking to do. He does need to, but he gets the power there. No, he didn't need to push it. He needs a power on this next one, doesn't he? Oops. Random view switch there. Yeah, me too. And I'm watching in my own clone. No, he's not going. He's not going for the wolf. No. I, I quite like that. You know, I quite like going for the wolf. Oh man, he would have cast it as well. <laughs> if we're going with this. Well, I mean, the flip side of that is he's got two removals this turn. Yep. So in terms of on-field numbers, I know neither are permanently out, but in terms of on-field numbers, that's uh, that's. Probably made up for the crocs leaving, hasn't it? Wow. So yeah, oh, the, uh, and this is good because now he gets a two into a two, right? So like that's that's actually yeah. like he gets he gets that out of it. But 
Yeah, but he could have hit the wolf. Yes, I did like hitting the wolf. But I'd like it. I think maybe, funnily enough, if he'd had dodge, he would have hit him right because it would have been the it would have been the tackle hit, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so he might yeah. have even gone for it if he'd gone dodge. So actually, by making him less. Protected. But for some reason, it's sidestep instead. Yes, yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. Or and move I like instead. Sidestep, move as well. Don't, right? Yeah. Don't you have to have dodge before you think sidestep's a great idea? I would have just taken dodge instead of move because once you've got block mighty then you want dodge, tackle, sidestep, don't you? Well, we see them in the order he took them, don't we? Yeah. So wasn't it... Um... So I'd have taken dodge over the move. That's what I'm saying. I would, yeah. I wouldn't have yeah. even had the decision to make. I would have taken dodge over the move. But once you go move... Then... Once you go move, you can't go tackle next, unless the whole team didn't have a tackler. Yeah, they didn't, because he played mean, he didn't have any tackles, so... Well, then, you... OK, so then I guess that's why. Yeah. But surely after move, you, you definitely... Because you, you've already taken mighty blows, so... After move. It's difficult, isn't yeah, it? I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't. Sidestep isn't in my chain of what I would want to add. No, I wouldn't have taken the move. First of all, I'd have taken dodge tackle sidestep. But if I'd taken the move for some reason, like you know, supernatural possession or something, then um, <laughs> I would have taken dodge and then sidestep and just pass tackle on, which seems terrible, right? But I think I would. It does because that that's just such a waste of the mighty blow. Yeah, which is why I wouldn't have taken the move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I want dodge and sidestep on him 100%. Or play the team it, until you get a legend. I and the, um, yeah, I mean, that's it, it just seems out of reach in CCL legend. Uh, down to one reroll, just quietly on turn four. Bit squeaky yeah, bum. Yeah, yeah squeaky first half rerolls, though. And if, it's, if it secures him an on the field position where he's dominant, he won't mind being down to one or zero. Mm -hmm. But he's not dominant, is he? He's not dominant, that's the problem. I mean, he's doing all right. He's he's in a solid position where he's not under the threat he was under. The ball is secure. Still on a knife edge, isn't it? Um, the yeah, last absolutely. thing you want to do against Soros is, is lose lose players. You don't want to be men down against Sor um, Lizards, do you? you just, he's, got, he's got some lovely positions he could get into, but they sort of involve leaving the golems behind, which is a very bad idea. Always. Yeah. yeah. You might just you might just go full Reddit and blitz the skink and then go. Well, the, the sidestep other. skink to the left is looking really sexily blitzable to me right now. Yes. Um, yeah. Walid double O double four. Could, it is a close game. You could pull some stuff up still involving the golems and have you know a cage there, but it's not central, and you really don't want the strength of lizards pushing you onto a side this early in the drive. You'll never get back central again. No, always oh, going for the three D. Wow, he's really coming to this. Okay, three into two. Finally, a bit of a always fun. bit of righteous skink. Oh, he's doing it with his palm. Pom 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 pom. What a look at dog. What a look at dog. I mean, that was. Well, pretty he was far lucky. enough away that yeah. Was that lucky? It was a bit a lucky. Yeah, it was, uh, with no with no block. Yeah, it was a bit lucky, right? It was well, lucky. Both down and pals are both good actions, so it's it's um it's about seventy five percent, isn't it, to get one or the other? It, it was on lucky. Three, it was luckier than just going on three into three with tackle <laughs> and block, right? Well, because of sidestep, it would have been blow. three into two. But, but he yes. could have done and three because into it's, three, couldn't he? Because it still had mighty three. blow. I yeah. would agree. I'd have gone with the wolf. Yeah, I think. I think. For, but I think he was planning to pom if it wasn't removed. He was oh yeah, 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 pom. yeah. He was one hundred percent going to because he's in a position where he's not going to get fouled back. Yeah. It was a little bit. It was a little bit okay. greedy, right? So it was a bit lucky. Having taken it out, Jim. Couldn't he have pushed three squares forward of where he is right now and yeah, be over yes. the halfway line with the ball? But this makes it easier to switch back to the other side. And this, it does. This it makes does. it easier for Bazza to overcommit. See, the dwarf in me wants the space up the left, but the new, much more zen elf coach in me says don't <laughs> close the, the dwarf in you, PC, your ass will be twitching by turn four if you haven't got past the LOS, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, as you say, create that flexibility, because the whole field is mine, isn't it? Mm. I have the pace, I have the agility, it's all mine. They're all oh, yeah. square. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. You know, Stay back, doesn't matter. We've got the pace. All of those squares are mine. It's interesting. The Golems are sort of acting like a tree, aren't they? A big fulcrum around which he can swing this defence. Yeah. And then attack up either side of it. And if the Sauruses commit too heavily down one side or the other of it, then they're going to get outflanked, you think. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. it's, it's a fascinating position. 
Yeah, and to be fair, it wasn't just greedy, right, trying to get the pump. Also, it, by going for that pump, it means that he gets the wolf here ready to smash this guy next turn, right? He's just going to make this same blitz again, probably. Uh, or but certainly he can make the same blitz again instantly. Um, so I guess that, that guaranteed him being free, able to make this blitz, which is pretty nice. Oh, now Oof. down to nine versus nine, so we are Straight definitely... Right the re-roll there. <sighs> We're definitely going to see some... Um, some space there. on the field, not enough now to adequately cover a whole field, and a lot of pace on both teams. I, I, I never like adding more things to a mess of twap, twap mag Do you know That's what? Just you see, he's he's got to try and free them, though, right? Because if he doesn't do that, this guy gets nailed. Why? This guy gets nailed. Two on two is fine. No, but they're not. It's not because they're getting called mighty. Would he have been better off blitzing the zombie on the left, or sorry, on the right? on your screen um yeah and then to protect them from you can cover the point where they can't up. then be claw yeah. into the golems i think the guard oh, there so, is what he needed i think the guard yeah, there yeah I, I, I agree with calcium yeah i like yeah, his plan. yeah blitz there and then stand there yeah yeah that'd be pretty just scary. quietly and he rolls uh second yeah. skull in two turns yep yeah. and down out and that's the last reroll goal <laughs> yeah so yeah m Good. more unlucky than uh than Baz's even well, they, neither of them had great dice, but yes, Andy is the one with zero rerolls. I think Andy can feel particularly hard done by the fact that he's had a number of armor breaks and they've only resulted in largely stuns. You know, another mm. game and half this Saurus team is sleeping. Yeah, so, I've, I've, I think I've heard that, that song. Wasn't it originally, before it was covered by you, wasn't it originally called The Banger's Lament? <laughs> oh, I've I've sung that a few times in my time PC. <laughs> I know that shit word for word. <laughs> oh, glorious. It's an yes. I mean, Walid. I know the adverts are on. You probably can't hear me. So, stop coming in here kissing up to the commentators. <laughs> Watch your adverts and pay for Jim's dinner. Yes. <laughs> and you know that because I'm on an ad break too because my subscriptions run out and I don't get my Prime back for another three or four days. Paying <laughs> bread. Yeah, not everyone gets them. Not when adverts yeah, run, not everybody who who can get adverts gets them. Yeah, I meant to cancel my subscription sixty four months ago, but I just don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Honestly, legitimately, every single time the money comes out for Jim's subscription, I'd look at it and go, "I should really fucking cancel that." <laughs> I haven't cancelled yeah. it for months. It's just... I could yeah. do it now, but I just can't be bothered. <laughs> Thanks, Unfortunately, Bob. me and my partner have yeah. looked for each other. What do I step. get for my seven ninety nine a month? Jim accusing me of fucking using hero clicks. That's what I get. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I, I wasn't here when that conversation happened, but it does sound like it struck a nerve, Kelsey. No, not at all. I'm not sure about, yeah. about it. I'm not sure about it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Are they like Kinder Eggs? Is that a similar thing? Oh God, you're killing me, man. More or less. I mean, it's it's not that bad. It's just I'd refuse to play calcium in a tabletop tournament, you know. Yeah, that's right. He'd <laughs> right. be that guy on Friday, on Saturday. Yeah, I'm not playing. You haven't no. marked your team correctly. <laughs> well, Ed, I was taking the piss, as I'm sure you know, as I consistently yeah, I do know. to myself and others. I meant no offence. I you just know try I and enjoy my life, massively. and I try and help other people enjoy life too. <laughs> But yes, if you are a sensitive of disposition, then other streaming channels are available. <laughs> I think I might be a bit starstruck when I finally meet you, PC. I, I will. I will. I, I get a bit tongue-tied and a bit nervous, you know. Well, um, you said to me in the past, I worry I might get struck when you find <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Calcium will get tongue-tied in more ways than one. <laughs> do you want? Well, you could. I mean, I do have friends I kiss when I meet them. Would you want a big on big old? Yeah, kiss. yeah, go big or go home. Yeah, big, big meaty hug. Doesn't Definitely. terrify. I'm very much a hugger. Oh, well, we're going to get on famously then. <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm not coming to the Davotational, uh, clashing as it does with the North London Derby. And I'd already turned down the London Grand Tournament, which is on the same day, although that's got such a crap said that I was, wasn't going to go anyway. I will fucking... I am going to try and go to a few more tables. Well, it depends how this one goes. It, it may go like a bag of shit. Um, I'm sure it won't, because I'm going up there just to play. I'm, I'm not interested in winning. 
Um, if, if Sunday morning you wake up vaguely sore with your arms around Dimmy G, then you know that's just standard for most tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 is a serious possibility. Me and Dimmy are going to get absolutely wasted. It's interesting, this isn't. There's four possible squares for this. Yep. I guess technically five, and he's gone with none of them. Okay. I know. I, I yeah. You have to move him in and hit the fleshy right. I guess the thing is, if you if you get knocked over, you leave a gaping hole. So you could go there to minimise the the one in the one in eighty one, or you go there for an for like an. You have to. I mean, I don't thing. hate a blitz on the white on the. He blitzed, the, uh, he blitzed already. Oh, it already blitzed, right. He could have gone in there and then hit this fleshy, but I think he, he had to move it in and hit one of the fleshies. He, he had to, didn't he? He's got a reroll. I think you had to move in and hit one of the fleshies. I still don't mind that he's tying those fleshies up, because yeah, ramming those fleshies up into them. the face of my other Saurus is, is the big problem. Only if you knock him over, Jim. If you don't knock him over, you've created a bigger mess for yourself. But it's only one square to the left. Wasn't it? I, I think you've got to put in that Saurus and punch one. I think. Uh, if it doesn't, I don't go, like if it doesn't go down, you look a fool, and if it goes down, it stands straight back up, and you're still stuck on it. Yeah, I don't like it. Don't like With it. Sorry, God, to, you know, <laughs> Give people leverage on you. Mm. See those those Sauruses you said you know would soon be banged out. He's still throwing his wolf at, so he's still blitzing backwards. Yeah. Because he's so bothered by them, it's not giving him the freedom he wants. Yep. His, his golems cannot be involved. However, they can be now. So, but it's turn six. You know, he needs to make progress next turn. And where's he going? Exactly. And he's got these two edge fours that can respond to anything, hasn't he? The edge four skinks can easily just one d wherever he goes. Almost. Oh, well, and particularly, I'm not sure carrying on the blockless wolf at this point is sensible. He hasn't got any choice, has he? I was it's about to say, should, should, should you he hand be over carrying to the other on one? the ghoul? Shouldn't he, be, well, shouldn't he have carried on the ghoul in the first place? Maybe, yeah. yeah. I, but he probably yeah. felt he needed the guard, right, for the LOS hits, because that's the problem with, yeah. with lizards with so much strength and guard themselves. And, as I said, Necro are great, but they're not long on good pieces. So that ghoul is doing its job up on the line, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, the ghoul's doing things. This is the, like this is the thing. Like, taking this... Uh, this werewolf is terrible if he doesn't have the ball. Yeah. Because he can't do anything. He can't hit anyone because he's got frenzy. It's just <laughs> yeah. a walking, he's yeah. walking 140 TV liability. Yeah, yeah. He's, so at least this way he's serving a purpose within the team. Yeah. And if the ghoul had the ball, it's not like you'd want the ghoul getting hit. So it's it's kind of fine, but at this point... And you can't hand off because of the rain, so it's a four yeah. plus. Yeah, four plus without a reroll. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, you have to leave it as is. Yeah. Um. And he's a bit unlucky. He's been battered with skulls, and he so he's had to reroll. He's uh, not had the best of dice. Yeah. However, you know, I mean, people questioned why I went up to a third reroll despite having leader against the flings. And it was because I knew they'd bring a chef. But also, I don't hate having three rerolls and a leader in an overtime format. I love leader. I think it's a great skill. Well, four rerolls is is a decent number. It's not way too many. Back in the old fumble days, when there were lots of teams over two thousand, most were rolling with five for overtime formats. It's it's good that he split the team out here, isn't it? Because you know he's got this. Yeah. If he if he can't he can't just one hundred percent ignore this guy. But if he blitzes no. him, then he's limiting how much he can get over that side. So this is pretty nice from under here. Like I'd want to blow this guy. You know, even handing the ball to the white, let alone anything ridiculous like trying to throw it. Remember, it's still a four yeah. for that guy to, ca to, to catch, and there's no reroll. But it keeps him honest, doesn't it? It keeps Bazaar honest. So that's, that's cool. Does it? You can drop a, a Saurus on it and a Skink one behind it, and then everything else can concentrate on the other side, maybe? Well, there you go. That's a, that's a big commitment. If you can take a, two players out on him, that's amazing, isn't it? Or you just, as you say, you do blitz it down. Mm, I think that's what he's going as to long do. As, as long as it powers, it sort of solves the problem. The fact he hasn't blitzed with either of these two, I think he's definitely going to blitz this one. Yeah, I think you're right. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Is that is that baiting him? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yeah, Has maybe. To, isn't it? Because I think Andy will have got a bit of a semi there. <laughs> can I, can I yeah. Laugh? <laughs> I didn't. I'm not even playing in the match. <laughs> well, we both me and Jimmy let out involuntary squeaks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 
You know, you know, he's got to worry about the reverse, like if he goes too far over here. Well, I think it was good getting this wide. No, I like this. Look at that field position. Strength all the way across. Mm. He's saying, all right, wherever you come, I'm going to respond. Yeah. The Who's white blitz down? down. So the white is not a scoring threat. I mean, it is, but it's so many go for it. It's under four plus to receive the ball. It's just really not. It's staying on the wolf it's on. Does he go down? Because he goes left, th doesn't this he? Guy, this guy is going down 100%. To this one, right? So he's got he's got a I mean, pressure here to go forward. So there's a gaping hole here at the moment. So this skink has to go one over, otherwise this guy gets blitzed and you're through the middle. Um, so that's interesting. So he probably wants to go one over there. So maybe he's like here. Oh, well. I'm I'm going up the left, Jim, all day. That lonely guard Saurus without block on it. Mm. Yeah. I'm putting yeah. my white between it and the other Saurus up there. I'm putting my wrestle DP zombie in as my second assist. Yeah, and then I'm hitting it with a with the nice wolf, and then just potatoing the bad wolf, yeah, so and then throwing this... a golem as far up there as I can. Yeah, so that guy have been here, and this guy here, and this guy here, right? That's better, isn't it? And then him there. I, think that I just the think we're a little overextended to the right as yes. we're looking. Yeah. But then if I you don't, then he goes through here, right? So it's it's tricky. It's really tricky. Because if you don't, but to come up the middle, he's first got to knock that Saurus over cleanly. And then even then, it's it's a narrow space. You've got to knock the second one over cleanly too. I I, I don't hate them pushing him up the middle. And having said that, he's just going to knock everything over with powers this turn. Yeah. Which Andy's probably due. Yeah, I mean, this is, the biggest payoff is through the middle, isn't it? Because you can just get everything yeah. through. But even then, yeah. I guess not really, right? Oh, you've got to go up the left now, and you you can that white is pulling double duty by having... basting that Saurus and giving a guard assist for the guard one. Well, now you have actually got a golem blitz up the middle, haven't you? So you only need one assist to yeah, hit the yeah, that's like blows to us. Yeah, but no re And if you power it, then your, your golem is involved and everything else comes up and you've got a lovely middle of the pitch awesome place. Golem. But no, he's, he's doing my original idea and he's coming up the left. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like this, but there's not much that can come with the ball. I think he's blitzing with the white so that both wolves can go up together. I yeah, think he's, that's he's, the plan. He's, he's blitzing with a freshie, isn't he? Surely. Okay, he's blitzing, well, he's blitzing with a wrestle? Yeah. But now they're cutting off squares that the wolf could be going through. Yeah, I hate I hate this this one. I, I, no, they're the not ball quite up. Go big or go home. They're not quite. But if the, if the wrestle drops in place, they will be. He's just blitzing with a wolf. Oh, boy. Oh, I hate this. Oh, and yeah, then uh, don't. Uh, well, look, Andy knows his space. He's presumably thought there's a pocket he could define and keep the other one safe in. Uh, not move, not moving the ball carrier first in case you won in nine. That. Yeah. That's, well, it's. Oh, it's, oh no, sorry, he didn't win in nine. He, he, he needed, might he won it, but he needs to um, go through the square the wolf went through. I think. Yeah. It depends. I mean, is he planning I to got go through? Eight, seven, six, five, four, he's three, gone up here two. and he's gone there. Uh, he needs to be. Yeah. If he's not doing go for it. He needs to be one step in front of where the wolf is now. Yeah, yeah. And so he moves the wolf. So, it's fine. so the wolf needs to go too. It's fine. Yeah, that wolf's going up too, isn't he? Yeah, yep. it's fine. Just imagine if that wolf had dodge right now. <laughs> yeah, it's just it was a bit greedy. Right? One, it's two, a bit greedy. Three, I feel four. like th this fleshy blitzing and following is like way better, right? Like it's way stronger defending the ball. Yes, the tricky, like... the tricky bit of this bit is going to be doing the two go for it's with the zombie. But if he does those, he's pretty Gucci. Just because, and then I think what you need to do is blitz the Sauruses free, so you get things in front. Because if he gets this zombie in place, I don't think there's a way onto the ball. Double GFI the fleshy at the end. Double GFI the zombie. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even double Hi, GFI, the the golem can't really get anywhere useful, but uh, the zombie can. Well, the can't zombie now. can get. Up in front, left of the ball, it still yeah. can. No, it can't now because he, he could have gone oh, yeah. there and gone it's there, which would have been pretty good. But, yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, I've done, done the zombie still first, not, obviously. Done the it's zombie not first. as useful as, as this. No, obviously, you do the zombie first. Whereas in front of that Saurus, that's the Saurus I was going to use to blitz the other one off. So now the other yeah. one has to lose a step by blitzing itself free. Yeah. It's only one step, but still. Eventually, all the millions of stuns has paid off pretty much, hasn't it? And uh... yeah, so Baz is just uh, just double lining this. Baz could have hit the ball. 
Court has elected not to try. And of course, this is not easy. I, I quite like going for the ball here. Mildly. Um, I, 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 don't, like, I like the ball blitz. Because of the, the just lateral movement of the wolves. Oh, it's a 1D. Oh, it doesn't want to move sideways because of the lack of go for it, does it? Could have hit. He could have hit the ball. On if he, if he. Yeah, did. has to blitz. <laughs> has to blitz himself out. Yeah. Absolutely. You could have put these edge fours in here, right, and then chained. But um, the problem would be is he would he would only have to be able to hit from there, and the guard would have uh, stopped it. So that, that idea wasn't that good. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I see. But there's. A, I mean, that's still a lot of go for it's for the skinks. The first one it isn't. It's just two dodges. The second one it's dodges and go for it's to get in that position. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, G, one GFI. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one good. GFI and two dodges off each. Yeah, um, yeah that's not terrible. Yeah. But then you're still dodging a, a Saurus to do the actual hit, aren't you? No, oh, no, that no. one at the back. Yeah, the one at the that back. That one at the yeah. back could have come up through. Yeah, I see. Yeah. But you need the power. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's probably better. I, I don't think this stops it. No. That's the problem, isn't it? I mean, it maybe it does. But... I, th I think it does if he pulls off a Saurus dodge. Yeah, he needs a big five plus. No, I think that hit two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, look, without, without doing anything, Woo! Andy. Yeah, come on, now he needs to come all the way, mm -hmm. all the way. Yes, I, I mean, can it go one more? It can go one more. I might go one more. One more is such so, so stronger. Mm. Is it? Yeah, it really is, Jim. Because he's still getting hit on two dice by the thing, isn't he, with two assists? Like, do you know I what I mean? mean? Like, he's he's hitting you with on four dice with a wolf, whatever happens. <laughs> Before he did yeah. that, Andy could just walk in on a two plus two plus. Mm. Um, the problem with this is that both golems can touch it without go for it, and then the other wolf can just move it out of the way, and Andy can still go in on a two oh, plus. Oh, you can go back. Yeah, go back. One. Robin so if he Cross. goes yes. one further, one nearer to his own touchdown zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so diagonally up left as you're looking, then at least the golem has to do a similar go for it to assist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like one back, and then maybe two back, right? Maybe just two yeah, back. Yeah, I mean, two's even better, ball. but it's it's yeah, it's, no, it's I tough to justify. No, I have to go back. I think. Doesn't really do a whole lot. Well, it means it's two into one. No, it's not. No, he can just bring something forward and cancel yeah, the others. Yeah, or he's got this. He's got this. He's got this. It's this is pretty easy. But you do need to make oh. sure you don't clog up your own route. Yeah, yeah. I said that, and then I realised no, because he has to go here, 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 doesn't he? These three have to be have to. These three have to be free. Yes. So maybe it is good enough. One, two, three, four. So there's still a go for it required from one of the fleshies. And the other one doesn't. And then you can blitz. And, but first you need to cancel the other Saurus. And then you blitz with a good wolf. And then even if you just move it twice, you should have a two plus two plus. You have to move it twice. That's the problem. If you power it, it occupies it. Yeah, if you power it, you occupy one of your squares, don't you? Yeah, you, ha you need these three squares, right? Well, if you power it, you dodge. Fired, if you power it, you dodge off, which again is why he needs dodge, and not fucking sidestep. <laughs> <laughs> but no, if you power always... it, occupies this. You need these three squares. You need these three squares. Yeah. So this yeah. is the thing. So you can't power on the first one. You have to push it into a pow. So yeah, this is pretty good. It's actually pretty good from Bazaar. No, no, no. Because if you power on the first one, you just push it straight towards the touchdown zone. So who are you? Not who between you... the other two. So, so if it's an instant pow, it goes. So where are your north. assists going in? They're going in um, the bottom right and the top right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, if it's, and then, I, then I cancel the other Saurus. I'm, I'm stepping one space to the right before I blitz. Right, and you're hitting here. Yeah. And if you push. And if I push, he goes between the two fleshies. And if I pow, he goes next to the Saurus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God, I don't know why I was so dumb. Yes, this is pretty easy. And then if I pow on the second set, I can just keep moving.
Yeah, it's if yeah. I double push. That it's yeah, still I, still for a some reason I was thinking I had to push it there on a on a pal. But yeah, so now he needs to cancel the other Saurus. Yeah, so he cancels the other Saurus, and here we go. Yeah, I was just being a big dummy. I, for some reason I was thinking I had to blitz from here, you know, and go straight. But of course, yeah, you can push him to there. Yeah, it was super yeah so easy. on an instant pal, you just go straight forwards, and on a push, you push to the right, yeah. and you have to pal on the second set. Yeah, it was easy. Gets the pal. So now it's 2 plus 2 plus. I think the double GFI back was. Well, he had to do the first 2 plus to get the other fleshy in position, so it's three 2 pluses and the 2 die. But, yeah, it makes it easy. Yeah. I, th I think it was 2 back. I think 2 back was the play there from Basil. I think so too. Making those golems have to do more go for it to get to you. Because anything you added go for it was adding go for it to the 2 he definitely had to do as the wolf anyway. Yeah. But I'd have dodged that first Saurus. I didn't see what use it was doing in that zombie. Well, at least it's not going down, right? But yeah, it wasn't doing anything. But it's, it's an easy thing to do, right? Because you think, ooh, he's strength four and he's big. I want him stood there. But yeah, he should have. So the Necro have before. suffered nothing. Absolutely no attrition. They are yep. all 12 of them still completely fine. No one sent off. Nobody injured. The Lizards have not recovered two of their KOs. Uh, mm -hmm. So of their... No, because Kitswag and Krolotha did wake up. Yeah, yeah. The so they have got two back and two that didn't. So they're still missing a Saurus and the Crocs. Yeah. What well, one we'll came back, wasn't it? Got yeah. Gok Totchex must have been a thing, and I guess yeah. Morbird is a. Totchex, yes. And I guess Morbird is, a, is a, some kind of undead character. Some kind of undead thing, yes. <laughs> yeah. But he's got another zombie. chance to kill, and he's still got a Yes, it's, it's, the it's the guard zombie that went out. And the uh, and the bribe is gone from Andy, so this isn't too bad from for Baza. No, but I mean, considering some of the game states in that half, he would have. He's, I bet slightly kicking himself. You know, no re rolls. Yeah. You know, attrition was very equal for the first few turns and things. There were lots of stuns that went there. There were so many stuns. Yeah, a lot. Although, like he went, he yeah, went through his re rolls pretty pretty quickly. He was making so many continuous stuns that it was he didn't really have much of a semblance of a defence really, did he, Bazza, until the last turn when it was too late because he was already... I mean, he did very well. He started under so much pressure with that misfield. And he had that blockless ball carrier that he did manage to keep safe and, and not really give Bazza that many opportunities to hit. Although I liked that one you were working on, Jim, and I did think there was such a low chance of stopping the touchdown. Yeah. That it was, it was really worth perhaps having a go at that. Yeah, the the only bad thing was the guard. The guards on the guard ghoul made it a one d instead of a two d. I think if it was a two d, yeah. it was a hundred percent the play to go for. Um, I think if it had just been a one d, maybe, it's, maybe yeah. it wasn't worth it. Yeah, it was it was going to be bleak, but I don't know. They didn't look to be enough to wall up effectively. Yeah, yeah, it was probably right for the one d actually, because you still particularly it, it when was, that golem was, did the move it did. I really liked that move yeah. from Andy. I thought that was class. Yeah, it was three dodges with dodge and one GFI, so it was almost certain to get it. But you do need the power to. Uh, you did. You did need the power on the two d to get the one d on the ball. Now, Baza, of course, playing the uh, the modern rules on tabletop has kept two re rolls for this uh, this one turn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good luck with it. I guess that, that the good thing about the sidestep is, um, well, I mean, until he got the perfect defence, the good thing about the sidestep over dodge was stopping the one turn. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, and suddenly the wolf not on the line anymore. There's a shocker. Yeah. No, but this is still on. This The one turn is maybe even more on now. <laughs> uh, Isn't it? Yeah, why has he put himself there when he can be chained... Into the sidestep skink. Mm -hmm. That seems bad. Yeah. I mean, like, terrible. Yeah, I think he, I think he's going to realise and bring everybody back. <laughs> we just need to be... I mean, if all three of you... If the two golems are in front of Sauruses and the zombie's in front of a Saurus over that left side, that right side as you're looking, then there's no, no shenanigans that's, can that's be pulled. That's not good enough, is it? That's not good enough. He, but this, needs... this is, this is not good. No, this is even worse. But there's, he's got to bring everyone back up. He has to, he has to defend it properly. There's no way he can defend it. There's literally yeah, if no you put two can... two golems, if you, as we're looking, if the two yeah. golems, if you start on the right hand edge and put the zombie where that golem is, yeah, and then the other two golems in inwards yeah. from it, then you blitz and they, him here, the golems, and then push it and push him, get him forward, and then. Oh uh, yeah, I suppose eventually you could get to be the point where you're yeah. pushing the, the yeah, sidestep yeah. good skink. 
Yeah, like yeah no, you're right. And yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> the problem is you'd have to get something off to go around and do that blitzing, but I see you, you could do it with a skink. A skink, yeah, a skink, because you've got two guards. You've got all the guards in there to help with that. Yeah. That to there, and then that. Yep, he's re yep, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's realised. Yeah, from there. He's yeah, realized no, I just he's worked it out. Him back up, you yeah. could do it from there. Yeah, I called this, and Andy's going to work out that it's, he can't stop it, so he's got to bring everyone back up. No, he's got to bring everyone back. It's not stoppable. <laughs> Any three you leave anywhere on the line, you can get the zombie to a position where one of those sidestepping skinks is able to be pushed into range. Yep. Called it, Jim. <laughs> uh, yes, Frank Furter, yes he did. The renowned elf coach PC did manage to win with a very uh, unfamiliar race to him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying different things, Jim. I'm experimenting, <laughs> you know. I'm at that age of my life where I've, I've done so much elfing now that I need to try some new things. <laughs> Do you just go for the uphill? I'm still wondering if this is possible. Um, I mean, the skinks can get anywhere, you see. Well, Andy's been very clever, actually. No, it isn't, I don't think. Yeah, he's put these here. This is pretty good. It would be... Oof. Oh, well, it's definitely not possible now. He yeah, no, it. not with a quad skull. That was a bad it would have been three, three reds to get the first push. Yes, if he didn't, if he didn't put anyone else in, yeah. Yeah, That's I why mean, he was I doing that, to try and get someone in, wasn't he? he was trying Absolutely. To, uh, was trying to hit Just that. cancel one of them and you'll, you'll take on a two reds, maybe. But Okay, well, the Crocs is back. The Saurus is not. So, only ten lizards. Well, eleven, but down at a quality player. Got two reserves. Oh, right? yes. No, he had a spare kick, didn't he? So, yes. He's just, he's just down in quality, uh, being a Saurus. That should be doable, as long as he doesn't get... And he had two spare skinks. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. There'll still be one on bench. One on bench. Well, I mean, it adds, it adds to his pace, so that's no terrible thing. I think he can probably cope with this team with just six towers of power. Yeah, probably. It's just if he loses more, right? That's the problem. Yeah. Because he's starting with less, it's easy to get hits on them, and then it's easy yep. to remove more and make it harder and harder. Oh, certainly it's the start of the snowball. Andy will be thrilled that one of them has, has not come back. Yep. Correct. <laughs> if you just asked me, I'd have been happy to tell you all about my elfie. I don't have to go. <laughs> Checking up on me like a sneaky sneak. <laughs> How dare you doubt the credentials of this esteemed elf coach? <laughs> I know, it's despicable, isn't it? Um, my record with high elves is 53 wins, 9 draws, 12 losses for a 78% win rec record. Oof, oof. There you go. I mean, it's a typical. He's a typical elf coach with you know ninety-seven percent of his games being on dwarves. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I don't understand why people are finding that hard to to <laughs> comprehend. If you have a fumble account, that link will take you straight to my page that shows you all the elfing I've done, <laughs> uh, including, as I said, that uh, that rather tasty seventy-eight percent win percentage with uh, pro elves. <laughs> Only seventy percent with high elves. Uh, just three hundred and fifty games count for that ranking on the high elves and that's none of the games I played in the league where I played three. Oh no it is I think the league games in as well oh. uh, let me just check that <laughs> hello neurons it's uh, champions cup uh, second round no no that is just the ones in competitive division so that's mm. 350 games in competitive divisions with high elves and another 300 games with my league team that won the white owl premier league uh, three times mm. so People think I'm kidding. I have the elf credentials. Yes. Famous elf coach. Famous elf coach. <laughs> and, elf, and elf expert. Yeah. So, um, this match is Kachain Chamal, the uh, the famous lizard team, uh, often coached by Bazakistin, as it is here. Uh, a name he uses often. Uh, and Andy Davo, famous necromantic and dark elf tabletop coach on the necromantics here. He is 1-0 up after the first half. A uh, very successful drive, stabilising in the rain after a misfield, scoring on his rookie wolf, which is what he wanted to do. Um, and one of the Sauruses has been knocked out. 
but other than that we have not seen a huge amount of attrition uh, but Zakistin still has his apothecary uh, and of course the uh, the necromantic still have their cheaty necromancer meaning that all of them can regen endlessly as many times as they want which is completely balanced and fair <laughs> well said Stor <laughs> next you'll be talking about is ranked rating <laughs> yes the white Isle league store you know the premier European time zone league on Fumble a site you know well yeah um, a title also won in the past by the likes of Pete W and Purple Goo. Ah, they're both and, and Gigster. Wow. Imagine playing in such a weak league. I would never. I did play in it, funnily enough. I did play in the White Isle League. And, it's uh, a cracker, isn't it? Well, it wasn't. It, no, it was rubbish because I played my right. first season and I smashed my division with Rookie Chaos. And, uh, and as I was doing so. I played uh, Purple Goo, and he's like, "Well, wow, you're really stupid winning games. Why are you winning games? Or what, what the hell are you playing at? And I was you're like, going to get oh. promoted too soon. Yes, and then I got promoted, and then I played somebody like Woodstock or somebody else, and then he'd like... He had, you know, 1,700 Dark Elves, and I had Rookie Chaos, and, yep. <laughs> and I got smashed to pieces, and he's like, play just about what I expected from this coach. I'm like, you absolute knobhead. You know I mean? like, I'm down 400 TV, <laughs> or 500 TV, maybe. No, there is, League is slightly different, but I'm technically head of leagues on Fumble, so I sort of feel I should take part in one. And I've never, I genuinely, I've never coached Dwarves in a league before. Mm. So in the restarted Whitehall League, which is under the new rules, I've been coaching Dwarves. Mm. Uh, which has been interesting. I've completely dominated the Premier League and won the last two Premier Leagues, and I'm now, um, well, I've been, I play game five of seven tonight uh, against Gagster, and if I can beat him, I don't think there's any stopping me. Well, I'm glad you're proving me right. <laughs> but the other Dwarf team um, came up into the Premier League this season after seasons of struggle and is still winning less than 50% of its games, keep, can't keep any Dwarves alive, and is bottom of the Premier League. And who's the coach? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I mean, I do feel I'm going to stop doing dwarving in that league soon. <laughs> Basically, as soon as I don't win the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> and swap to a different race. But yes, I do think they're very strong in a league format. Uh, particularly as this currently doesn't have redrafting, which is stupid. Mm -hmm. All the other coaches went, oh no, I don't want to redraft. <laughs> So here we go, he gets I the like hit. my favourite players. <laughs> my favourite player, man. Kill me favourite player. This is uh, pretty rowdy, right? Because the mighty blow can hit him back. Oh, no, you're okay. You have yeah. Move. You have plenty of move back. It's okay. Now he's going to run away, yes. And leave the rookie shielding it, which is why it's a rookie. It's, it's, mm. it's, it's the meat shield. It's still 140 TV. I would be hitting that wolf all day. Yeah, the problem is he wants to hit, he wants to hit here as well, and that's not easy, is it? Interesting how he gets hits off here. God, I guess you, you stand him up and blitz him, and then that gives you two, doesn't it? And then you see six, and he's six, you've got one more guard in. Yeah, okay, yeah, you can. I guess but you want to hit the Pommer, isn't it? It's interesting, isn't it? I want to hit the I don't pommer. mind throwing a dispo. He's got skinks to spare. I don't mind throwing a skink in for the assist. I can keep a Saurus back still and still do the hit on the wolf I want to do. No, hitting the wolf's easy. The problem is it's making the hit with his rookie Saurus, isn't it? How, yeah. Who does he hit and how does he hit them? Well, does he just I mean, not hit them, does he just stand there and He can just take it? a hit, can't he? Oof. Don't want it looks like we're doing leaving those two Sauruses to deal with all of that themselves and we're pushing up the other flank. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. I mean, it's going to guarantee the score, this, I think. Yeah. He's probably taken enough space already that even with the pace of wolves, he's, yeah, I think he can score now. Yeah. But then Andy's not going to necessarily mind him scoring if he chips a Saurus or two. Yeah, and if he can maybe even get him to go in early as well. It's like, you know, yeah. the problem if he, he's fueling both Edge Force Kings, so he wants to protect both of them, which is going to be, you know, tricky when the heat comes. Um, After that, yes. Can I just welcome Crystal to the booth? Nice to have him here with us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I did, did I say I didn't even notice? I it was a full-on yes. I literally didn't even notice, isn't that crazy? Literally did not notice, holy shit. Yes, anyway. <laughs> anyway, yes. He is just also blitzing for space to reinforce this 
push up the side with a central saurus. I'm loving that. Yeah, one step north from there, maybe. Possibly even. Okay, no, I'd have. I definitely have tagged those two downs. Yeah, he's gonna. He's gonna do with a rook. He's gonna do with a skink. Okay, okay, fine. Then all to the good. It's gonna be amazing, guys. <laughs> and I think we tank this hit with the rookie saurus. I don't see any need to dodge off because we'll fail. It's, it's not like a dwarf or a fleshy that's a 50 50 chance of getting off it. It's a one in three. Yeah. But then, and I guess if at least if he poms you, then he's down for another turn. But it's yeah, kind of and rubbish, if, if he it? poms AV9, it's kind of a bit fine. I mean, it might work, because high rolling things sometimes work, but it's not It's not as terrifying as getting pommed as AV7, is it? No. Which is what Claw Pom does, or what Pom does to AV7. Yeah. Be the first move Andy makes, probably. Maybe not. He might actually hit with a with a fleshy and then get the get the white back, right? I mean, the advantage of being the first move is he can then work out how the rookie wolf does the hit on the other Saurus. Yeah. He might not even bother. You know, he might just wolf both of those Sauruses. No, oh, yeah. No, nope, he does decide the pom will do it. It was the instant first action. Screw safe moves, just bat the Saurus. No, he did. No, he did. He did do the safe and gets move. the removal with the pop. <laughs> yep, oh, I do love being wrong. <laughs> that was the problem. Like it was, it was the fact it was instant as well, right? Like at least if he had to move yeah. somebody in to get the two D, at least you're taking up two players' actions. It was the fact that it was the all. No, it, it, one yeah, it was. Yeah. It had to be tried. But not only is that white not moving this turn, it's not moving very far next turn. So there's compensations. It still is only a KO. So, oh, he's going to be very pleased. That was only a stun on that, though. If he'd lost another Saurus, I think we'd see a very early score. Yeah. As but, it is, three Sauruses and a Crocs and four Skinks can hold out for quite a while. Yeah, potentially. Do you put the Fleshy in here and then hit from the front? Because if you hit from here, which is like the easier way, then you're getting into him if he well, pushes to the try sign. So, yep, he is. Certainly, I moved the fleshy because it, it shortens the route. Yeah, that's what he's. Yeah. He's, he's going to hit. And it's it's a nice is. dominant midfield position. It's a good place for the fleshy to be. Yeah, I was, I was sure he's going to do it. Yeah. See, I might have. From a, yeah, I was going to say, I might have given him back the move that you stole to put him there in the first place, which he did. Yeah. Goes there, and he goes there. <laughs> oh, somewhere anyway. Yeah. yeah, and the white comes and protects him. Yeah. Oh, special friend! <laughs> so, yeah, He's the cool, one. <laughs> the wolf is the one. It must be protected. <laughs> yes, it has to be protected. That's the most important thing, isn't it? Uh, now you bear with me, I am parenting alone, I just need to check that my children did actually finish their dinner and have uh, progressed towards homework and all that other good stuff. I'll be back in a minute. I'm sure the lovely Calcium will step up. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been silent for a while, I don't know if he's still around. I think he's maybe not Probably around. just wanked himself into a stupor. Probably, I mean. It is a Tuesday night, that's what he usually does out here. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm covering and come here to cover for a little while. Oh, glorious. While, uh, <laughs> Hello, Barbara, fine, yeah. Calcium come back. Hello there. Legend. I'm missing here. It's a crazy match, family. A crazy match. Um, two obviously top coaches with two not so top teams, funnily enough. 16 17, 17 70. So like, they're, not, they're not great teams. But um, it's very interesting. A lot, of, a lot of play backwards and forwards between, between them. It's been pretty interesting. Any significant uh, casualties around? No. <laughs> um, there is a, there's a couple of KO'd Saurus. Um, obviously now, Baz is just trying to get like a blade of wounds. To, <laughs> if uh, if you remember that from uh, from 40k, he just needs oh, yeah. he just needs like guys to take hits, doesn't he? And and let him stall because he really doesn't want the edge four getting hit. He doesn't want. The good Saurus getting removed, so it's it's getting tricky. Like it's getting tricky. I think you know it's definitely advantage Andy right now. <laughs> Calcium has had as much effect on this game as he had on his SFL championship match. For fuck's sake! <laughs> For fuck's sake, Skiro. 
So yeah, you know, like it's it's obviously looking good for the score is is Baza, but it's it's whether it can continue to stall, isn't it? And how much, how and like you know, three turns. If like you know, if Andy's not going to try and go crazy, right, and just force him in this turn. He, he's going to think if he can get maybe a three turn score, so he's going to plan in advance how to get back and how to get heat on, so he leaves himself three turns to score. And even two turns, he's got a shot, but three turns, he's got a better shot. <laughs> Quick maths there for you. And then he has a lot of uh, players still on the pitch, so he can put tons of pressure because he has tons of guard. Yes, yeah, loads of guard. It's really nice having the uh, obviously the four standard being the two whites and the two freshies, but then one on a zombie and one on a ghoul as well. Really nice. Now, what will uh, Wolf Blitz? There is a skin there that looks like a juicy target, but the frenzy could be a problem. Hmm. Yeah, the frenzy's stopping both blitzes. Maybe he'll just uh, fleshy blitz, right? Three dice with 90. Yeah, and uh, he can put the, the fleshy in the, between the two Saurus, and that's a very strong position. Hmm. Hello, Rothler man. Uh, this is Fymir uh, now. Yes, Fymir here. What the hell is happening with people not recognizing me? <laughs> I used to be someone here. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, the bomber, the bomber already uh, got yeah, out, the so there is. <laughs> Well, he does go for it. He, he could get stuck. He does. He voluntarily gets stuck. Unbelievable, Joe. I would have taken the push there. I don't know about you guys. Yes, I, I think that was the play. Taking the push and then one down, kill it, mm. frenzy, and you're in a very safe spot protected by the rest of the players. Yeah. I mean, he can protect him a little, moving the fleshy up. Tell him to say that. I mean, he can read chat, so he can say it if he wants. <laughs> he probably knows what it means. <laughs> uh, uh, that's Italian. Uh, oh, he doesn't know. I have no clue. Well, Rag but I can see ragazzi va via di aquí. <laughs> well, probably shouldn't have said it, seeing as we don't know what it means, but never mind. <laughs> nah, because ragazzi is uh, guys. And va via for around here. I don't know. So you knew something then. There you go. Italian and Spanish are very similar. <laughs> well, he, knew, he knew better than me, Stradica, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> translator, isn't he? Is fine here, so, you know. Yes, I am a translator from English to Spanish. Mm. <laughs> this. Maybe it's a chance to score here because the next turn for the Oh wow, he makes, he makes his go is he going back? No, I think he went for the easy, the easy hit. He's going in? Oof. Yeah, yeah, I call it, call it. Mm. I mean, if not, the next turn it was going to be a fucking nightmare. <laughs> not all Possibly was running behind and getting all your team banged on. Yeah. Or at least a score and now. Oh, they all came back. All right. God tier KO rolls from Baza, but Andy has five turns and three re rolls, so that's looking very bad for Baza right now. Really bad. Got a full team though, it's crazy isn't it, so there you go, the, the team stayed mostly full, and Panzer is left, coming up short at the moment. Does uh, Andy has sure hands? 
No, he, he only can, I can, he only has one ghoul. Yep, he's got one ghoul. He's got a rookie wolf. So he's got some, you know, he's he's not got great ball handling, ball fondling options. But the thing is now, Baz's skinks are unleashed, right? He, he, the rest of the match, he's, he's, he's kept them just, you know, like nothing, right? But now he's going to have to use them to win the game, like if he has to, right? So it, that, that's the, the upping of the stakes means that these skinks become a lot better because they'll actually do something potentially. <laughs> Fuwa, hello, Moradon. Yeah, no ball fondlers. And he's got to make such a massive commitment to the LOS that, you know, you. Does he do the same as last time, or does he try and be a bit safer? I don't think quick snap helps Andy because, you know... You have to move one square close to the ball because as a dangerous uh, back, you know, to, to get into... I mean, get in the guard and all that, but if you move up, you know, ahead... I think it's it's so hard to fight lizards that like you know even if they give you the quick snap, you, how do you get the hits off? <laughs> it's not easy. He's using the guard, the uh, ghoul on the LOS, but yeah, of course, uh, the wolf is a better ball carrier right now. Yeah, it's it's just because the, the wolf is so useless, right? The, the wolf, yeah, the rookie wolf, is useless. so useless. <laughs> But it does have the move 8, and it did use every square of its move 8 to GFI twice to score on turn 16 uh, in the first half. You know, I, would first tempted, half. I would have intended on not buying the Wolf and keeping the TV down, so maybe I can get, you know, a Wizard or a Cheney or something like that. Yes, I would, I would, have, got, I would have got a Ghoul, 100%. Uh, rookie Ghoul is or better than goal, Rookie yes, Wolf. Uh, rookie Ghoul is better than Rookie Wolf, and it's 50k cheaper. And I think it's just literally better. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's a better player. I think a rookie w ghoul is a better player than a rookie wolf. Genuinely. Um, however, of course, once the wolf has one skill, it's maybe better. When he's got yeah, two skills, it's definitely better. Like, it's a million times better when it gets two skills. But are you going to get two skills on it in the rest of the tournament? So I would have, I would have gone a ghoul if I was on me. Oh, nice weather. There you go. The, that's the rain issue solved. Yeah, much better set up than the first half. Is he going to open with a pump hit on the Saurus? <laughs> I think he probably wants to do it last, right? Oh, he does it first. Ooh, well, he's going to reroll that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to think about that. He has to, he has to reroll that. Yeah, that's... I mean, uh, you can let the... the... Now he's thinking if he's all pile on or not. He goes against it. Mm. Good move because there is a dirty player uh, skink very close. Yeah. And even if it's the AG4, uh, an AG4 skink, the exchange is massive. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Moradam. Yeah, a bit of a, a few words of frustration and an eye roll. Yeah. That's fair enough. Gesturing about how bad his look is. Yeah, I mean that was that yeah, was a pretty that. shit dub score. Yeah, that's the the one you won in turn one, so you can you know say that you were unlucky all the game, whatever happens. Yeah. And not now. I mean he's lucky he got the weather change right, because if this was a four plus pickup, he'd be in uh you know it'd be in even worse shit than this three plus that he's got to attend. No, it was a, a instant roll every single pickup. If you don't pick up, you have to reroll it. Because if you're not the skin, just they come around and pick up the ball. Yeah, exactly, but now he can't, right? Because that top skull, so now it's... Now everything's... Now everything is on this pickup. It's very... Very dodgy. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, Andy's rolled more top skulls, but like... Uh, He's also like broken arm in nearly every hit, <laughs> but also only made stuns. So like that's kind of that looks evened out a little bit. But he got enough stuns that it made it basically impossible for Bazard to mount a successful defense despite all of the uh, 
dub skulls and reroll burn. Yeah, that was that's good to get him back. You've got to have stuff back here against these skinks because the skinks are definitely coming, like a hundred percent. Because he's he's got these three swords to stand up this time. He's got the cro crocs to stand up, so everything's getting based. Something's getting blitzed, and the skinks are all coming through. I'm sure. I mean, he hasn't made any cars, has he? So he might, he might be pissed off that he hasn't made any cars, but he's uh, he's made infinite stones. Still, he's in the advantage here right now, having the ball, more than enough times to score. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like carrying on the ball because then you've got a blood step guard that can do things. And obviously he's movement aid, so when it comes to actually just scoring, he only has to be five squares in. But surely, surely everything is coming now. Somehow. Lots of tagging. I think the hit on the Devilis is going to be in the white with the guard. Yes, yeah, that seems nice, doesn't it? And then you can tag the, the zombie with guard. There you go. Yep. Oh, I like Karen the Wolf. I think Karen the Wolf is correct. <laughs> I'm not basing. I really like basing with this guy. Oh, okay, he's basing with him, but then, uh, then you could have also based this white, couldn't he? Like, you want to base, you yeah, want to help Dirk I think, base, I think he, the, you know, keeping the white, the base, the nullifying the, the guard there. And then, you know, the fleshes are stuck there, nearly useless. Mm -hmm. And that's most of your uh, strength is useless. And then, what? He's going to hit the crocs with whom? You have another lizard, you know, to... It's not that bad. Having that guard there, if he doesn't uh, tag uh, with him, you know, could cool open the chain of uh, hits. Still doesn't want to expose this one. That's that's. <laughs> ah, there you go. And this one tags the. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Now the yeah the the white has nowhere to go. Yes, exactly, Jenin. Yeah, the, the the rookie wolf is such a bad player in this matchup. Like, it's got no block, it's got frenzy, like it's got a nega trait and no strength. It's horrific against a team of strength four block guarders. It's absolute terrible player. So yeah, and might, the pieces and, it, and, and the fast. pieces and the pieces that have a strength too have dodge, so you need pause. So like, yeah, yeah and you are can. never gonna blitz with it because you have a much better place to blitz with. Yes, yeah. And you would hear. Yeah, it's a ball carrier with movement eight. I'd probably hmm. prefer a movement seven with dodge. Yes. Yeah, that's the that's the thing, yeah. Like once you've got it, once you've bought it and you're playing it, then you're carrying it. But I would have definitely just got, got a rookie cap. I would have definitely bought the goal. Yeah, yeah, also, you know, if he scores and gets a level, it's gonna be blocked. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you have a wolf with block, so fine. But a ghoul, you know that a ghoul will have a blotch, which is obviously much better. Mm. Oh, scoring and threat. And much cheaper. <laughs> yes, much cheaper. That's the thing, you'd have a wizard in this game. So you'd have had to have... Uh, if he'd got a ghoul instead of a um, zombie, then there would have been one less skink. And now as it happened, the one less skink wouldn't have mattered. But, you know, it could have done. <laughs> Uh, he could go the Elliot way, you know, keeping the TV so low without vampires, you can see any every game. <laughs> I see Bazakistein was forced in a little early. He was, yes. Hello, PC. Hello, Hi. PC. Hey, Femir. I see we've upgraded from calcium. <laughs> Upgraders, people. Upgrades. <laughs> yep. <laughs> More well, I didn't vote for you to have to leave Fermi. I'm very pro-European. <laughs> it was all the other people. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely, definitely don't want you in our country. But I, I do. 
<laughs> hay, hay que dar line a lo, like, no, no, you're good, you're good, it's the others, like, mm. Yeah, I mean, well, you're just one of us. A lot. You're, like, you're like them. Exactly, yes, I'm one of the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get, oh, ooh, that's a... Ooh, he hasn't powered him yet, three and a two. And we're still carrying, I mean, we have to, don't we? We discussed this before. We're still carrying on Terrible Wolf. Yeah. Because we just don't really have an option. Everything else has to be doing its job. We don't have spare pieces that are any good. Yeah. Correct. This. I mean, you re reverse that, put that ball on the ghoul and put the wolf behind it, and you're suddenly a lot less frightened of, the ball ca of attacking the ball carrier, aren't you? Yeah. This Crocs can uh, free the... The, the Saurus can free the Crocs at the moment. Which is super interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's... I mean, it's a worry. It's... You've got to keep everything back and... Again, just to hope to perhaps hold out from the old hit. hit oh, look. Took on the... Blockless one there. Mm. Masterful block choosing. Yep. I mean, right now, the tackle mighty blow uh, Saurus as a straight line into the He's ball. Just short, he, he? Just oh, yes, short. Short one. It's just short. Oh. I mean, more to the point, right now, this you is put one skink in place and a Saurus can push the white off the Crocs yeah. using the zombie, and then the Crocs is completely free, particularly if you power the zombie, yeah. to uh, to blitz this bull carrier. Or you could move the Edge 4 in and then the Crocs could free him so that he can hit, but I think it's probably better yeah. to just go the other way. He's not doing no, it. we're not doing either of those, which I think is a huge, huge mistake. Yeah, to me, I that was so. a very easy ball shot. And to put the Crocs with its lovely tail and its stand firminess right onto that blockless ball carrier, and I would definitely take the both down. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I'd have some skinks in beforehand, which is what he's doing. I'd also have that tackle score us over the other side of the field before I did it. Yeah. But he's setting for pressure gets, instead. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, it's good pressure. He's going to have a lot of pressure on that ball. Yeah, lots of ball pressure. Yeah. We like ball pressure. I didn't... I don't like where that Saurus has ended up. Why isn't the tackle piece Just either staying put, free or going him. somewhere near yeah. where the problem is? But I guess him. it's going to hold that white, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this yeah gives which him otherwise skins, he's, got, yeah. he's got no other way of holding that white, does he? Yes, yeah, so this gives him two skinks by... by yeah. I go in there at freeze two skins. Yep. Oh, sure feet. Oh dear me. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's not so good. Not good. I think Calcium left because he remembered that this weekend he's meeting uh, Dave in real life. <laughs> you know, it's better, oh, better leave me before I say anything. <laughs> Andy's bigger than him. <laughs> but Andy's going to have more, in theory, more supporters than a man with a jacket with his own name. <laughs> So you don't walk. You don't walk into someone's own party and uh, go. Oh, you're the guy I was most mercilessly slaughtering last week, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I think Davos played fine. Yes, greedy banger. Yeah, that was the thing, wasn't it? Brutal, absolutely brutal. That you make one the only vague amount of risk he's, he's put on the edge phone, it instantly failed and stunned itself. <laughs> yep. Still, I mean, stunned. It's not dead, so that's good. But it's also not relevant to the rest of this drive, which is very bad. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice. That's a nice chance, isn't it? Get the hit on the. Yeah. Croxy. Using the, uh, the double guard sauruses, uh, uh, golems, to great effect there. Mm -hmm. oh, and further yes. tying up the tackle mighty blow one as well. It's all just lovely. That's a lovely place for that golem to be. Mm -hmm. Even gives a one die on the crocs, doesn't it, to free up the zombie. No, he's a. Uh, oh, two die with the. Two yeah, two die with the golem, of course, to free them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh... hasn't solved the whole problem around the ball carrier, but it's given you lots of tools to solve it with. Yeah, yeah I didn't think it was a particularly high risk. Um, it was a high payoff with low risk, right? You, 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 you're putting the skink in, and obviously, if you're one in nine the block, then it's not great, but. If you pow, and if you push, it's not great, but if you pow, it's just incredible. It still wasn't the end of the world if you won in 9 it, because it is a wrestle zombie, so you could just take the both down. 
and then there's still some hitting you can do over there to establish some dominance and then just solve the problem over on the other side a different way. No, I was I was talking about last turn with the this the Crocs play, right? He, oh, okay. He, he needed the power for the Crocs play. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I but, still think of both down I might have taken. But I think... No, 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 the, to free the Crocs. Oh, to, to free, the free him on the push. Power, yes, yeah, but still, yeah. if you don't do it, you've got loads of time to replan. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I thought it was fine. Like, I thought you just put, your only commitment is putting a skink there. And yep. then if you get the power, then okay, it's a, it's a bonehead to blitz. But so what? It's just activating a crocs. Like it's not. I mean, I sort of done the, the skink onto that ghoul like he did. I would have done the hit in the midfield, except with the one that he freed instead of fr freeing it. I'd have brought the tackle piece over. There's, there's lots of things I'd have done to make it a little safer first. Yeah. And then it's a single skink dodge, which is your only risk. And if it works, you try it. And if you get the power, hooray, you're blitzing the ball. Yeah. And if you don't get the power, oh well, I'm replanning and doing something else. Yep. This is a bit of a frenzy trap, isn't it? This is a two into a one. Yeah, it's why he's not keen on going for it. It's why he's taken some time working out where he wants the assist to be and what he's going to do about it. Gets the power. Now that solved the problem on the ball, but not up ahead of it yet. Ooh, so it's still really got nowhere to go. Power yeah. apple. It was time, wasn't it? He can't afford, as you said, to go too many Sauruses down. And particularly, of course, you know, if they score, that's the game. Just stays where he is, thanks to that stun, probably. Yep. Well, as I said, there's there's nowhere to go. There's nothing he can blitz with that doesn't put him into bigger jeopardy, really. I mean, you could blink the spritz, the skink at the back, but what's the point? He could blitz with the ball, the tackle uh, mighty beast. Oh, wow. He's just yeah, gone. the tackle mighty, but if it's a push, you end up on another Saurus. Oh, he's just going for it. Okay, well, I guess with that stunned AG4, Croc splits. there's very little skink response, is there? <laughs> Croc splits? Oh, on a... On a five? Everything else looks pretty shit. That does look pretty shit. He's settling for hitting it next turn with that skink and holding everything up. I don't think that's going to work. I think that Saurus is going to be tagged as well. The wolf Plus, I think the wolf's going to, the other wolf's going to come and help as well. I think it's mm. it's a nice move, Andy. So it's probably safer up there than in the backfield. Yeah. No problem, Kelsey. So maybe it's a one D with the edge four. There is, there is. The edge four can definitely get there to provide the assist, and then you can one D with the other skink you just freed. And all you need is a push to push it onto the crocs. Oh, I would have blitzed with the edge for. But then you're pushing it away from the crocs. Uh, but you at least get the sidestep on it guaranteed, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There's always swings and roundabouts, but I prefer this because it can be pushed onto a crocs. Because you can't re-roll that. Mm. And then also, I would have had Edge Four for the recovery if I'd powered it. It's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it would have been pros and cons. So now the sidestep has to go one back from the AG Four, doesn't it? So it's stopping blitzing out using that. No, it's going in there. Mm. Not sure I like that as much. I mean, he has side the step, so. Yes, know. I'd have been one further back, though. But then, of course, the big problem is that there's a wolf coming through from behind, isn't there? Yes. There's multiple ways to give the uh, the pom white two die on this Saurus, freeing up the better wolf. Maybe the skink tags this this uh, wolf, as horrible as it is. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I would try and do. As much as it sucks, maybe yep. you just got to eat that. Yeah, I would. I would eat it's, it. It's a random skin. You still have two more on the bench. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. And it hasn't got dodge, remember, it's got sidestep. I do think he needs to step onto it. Yeah. And he has. Oh, love bless him. <laughs> had to think about it and decided it had to be, and I think he's right. I wonder there was if a he one had die to... on the white. I might yes. have been tempted by that. I was just going to say, I think he had to do that. He's got the re-roll. Just go for and, it. And uh, that Saurus is doing nothing there because it's tagged by two guards. So it's not offering assists to anything. So I think I'd have gone for that. So now, Even the push is a stronger position, isn't it? Yep. 
Because he's now, literally doing nothing on the column. Yep. Bazza is only playing for overtime now, so yeah. he's got no he's got this is a scoring threat, but it's definitely getting nailed by the by the way. Well, I mean, maybe that wolf dodges off, so perhaps mm. it, it is a scoring threat still. Yeah. But if I'm Davo, I kill it first, because then there's no problem at all, is there? Yeah. I'm not on camera, I'm only on voice. My daughter is moving around doing some printing. Mm. Doesn't wish to be seen by others. How do you want to have camera anyway? You are here with us. <laughs> yes, in the booth, yes. She's moving around the booth doing her private printing. You see, that's why I'd have moved that guard white on a 3 plus. Yep. Correct. If it, if it had been a one and sculled him, that would be even worse. That's pretty bad too. Yep. But it still isn't easy for no. anybody here. This is pretty decent. Rox is doing the, the Lord's job right now. Yeah. I mean, we can easily just put an assist on the Crocs and two die it, but if we don't power, it's a big problem. Uh, it's not easy to put the assists in. You need two no, assists. No, it's not easy. Two assists uh, to two, one assist to, like, you can put one assist in one okay. You've got the guard zombie behind, and you've got the other one that's... Yeah, that's but they were, the guard zombie had difficult, uh, had problems with it because there was the skink. Wow, he the, does. Yeah, I told you that skink might not get hit, but he... Instead of dodging off, he's hitting the Saurus with the wolf. Yeah. That to me is the sign of a man maybe planning on going to overtime. Maybe, but this lets him get the, this lets him get the this lets him get the hit on the Crocs, all right. It's the thing. It also means he can put a guard in next to that wolf. Yeah, absolutely, and blitz out with the wolf, maybe. Yeah, maybe. There's no chain. There's no chain. Well. There is. I mean, there is. Yeah, three, four, five, <laughs> there six, is. GFI, yeah, GFI. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but now, but now he didn't, four, five, he didn't power, six, he didn't power the Crocs, so. No. Yeah, okay. But yes, they would have been up past the Crocs. So, Blitz the, nice the IG4 with the Wolf. So the Crocs did exactly, that's why we wanted to push it onto the Crocs, isn't it? It's yeah. because it only needed to tank that one hit and suddenly it's a huge problem. So he has to Blitz out with the Wolf. Yes, yeah. Uh, That's the answer now. Uh, the IG4, blitz the IG4 and try to and run yep. away. And he's got cover as well. Yeah, and if you power it, obviously it goes to the right and you go left. And if you push it, it goes to the left. Ideally you push the power, don't you? That's, that's the... Yeah, push power yeah, is the dream, but... Oh wait, he's going for the side step? No. No, no he's not. He oh, is he going to go out? He's going to go out to the right either way no. and push this one. Yeah, he's no. pushing this one in behind the white. Ooh, I don't like that. I mean, because if you power, you you you're clean away. Yeah, it was always going to be a dodge. Whereas to the left, you're right. If you'd powered it, but then yeah, to the left, was the right one. it was always free if it was two pushes. Yes, but he's you couldn't put anything anyway. on it. He's actually four dodge stunt, isn't he? Oh, here we go. I this know. Very close. Oh, Ooh. he makes it. With the reroll. So he's play, down to yeah. just the one reroll. There's two skins to hit him if they can reach, which they both can. You score, don't you? He can't, can he? He can't. He's too. He's too. Oh rare. no, he's too short. So now you can punch this and try and power it, <laughs> and then uh, one D the ball. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Exactly. Don't you just exactly. Don't you just. Or do the dodge with the Saurus, 50% dodge, with a reroll, and two dice. Or you could just Saurus dodge it. I, I don't know which has the higher odds. You it's, know, it's, are... it, once you get there, and it's only two dodges at uh, 1 in 9s, and then two dodges at 1 in 36. Once you get there, it's 50% on a 1 die, and he's got three rerolls. Yeah. So you can rise that to 75%, because you'll take the both down. 
But it's if you get there, isn't it? It's if you get there. One in nine, one in nine, one in 36, one Instant in 36. Burst. And he fails the first one in nine. Yeah. <sighs> well, I thought that was the right play. But yeah, he's I gone down playing the right play. First, the AG4. Yeah, I'd have put the AG4. To, you know, the dirty player AG4, yeah, at least yeah. to base the, the yeah. wolf. And also because I'd want to go in with the... Um, if I took the both down, I'd want it to be on the sidestep and not the AG4. Would you? But then, on the other hand, if you're moving the sidestep at first, then you've got him based by a sidestepper. And then if you if you get the both down on him, and then if you power him with the Edge 4 Blitz, you can recover on Edge 4. So, like, it's, it is again, yeah, it's a 6 again, and 2 again, again, 6 and 1, and 2 3 is the other. Absolutely. However, the AG4 is also now dead, which it wouldn't be. Yep. It was a very good game, yeah. Things happened. And, yeah, there's a, no, there's no chance of the one turn, is there? That was because that was a, a turn back. Yeah, yeah that was saw from Bazzi, yeah. drive in the half. Cracking game of Blood Bowl. Jesus, mm. 22 armor breaks for the Necro. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. stunning him constantly. Five. Mostly, mostly to stun, but yes, mm. a lot of armor. Five breaks. for the <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, Reddit was right. If he'd broken more skin karma, perhaps he'd have won. <laughs> yeah. uh, they, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, yeah, oh, Baz are out. Davo through. Yet more the Necro march on. Yeah, I bet I bet Andy was really happy he was playing Baz's team and not Mr. Pitch's <laughs> team. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, any team that progresses needs to knock up against its kryptonite teams or get very lucky if it does. I mean, that's, you know, that's a KO format all over, isn't it? Yeah. You could tell it was in the top 5% of Chalice games because you talked about it past turn 4. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal, but, but yeah. But not unfair, Jim. But not no, unfair. No, no, it was two of the best coaches with, you know, not two of the best teams. They really don't have great teams. Uh, but yeah, it was it was, it was was bound to be good and interesting, wasn't it? You know, like it's interesting dynamics, isn't it, between the way Necro works and the way Lizardmen works. It's a good, it's a good, it generates like a yeah. kind of good matchup, I think, with interesting. Yeah, yeah. Interesting things happening. And uh, there you go. Commiserations, Bazza. Congratulations, Andy. Thank you very much, Fimir and PC. Absolutely glorious, guys. Pleasure. Always a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic. <laughs>